Welcome back to Real Talk with Chuck and Pam as I watch Chuck get slivers from his glass protector on his iPhone because it shattered so many places. It looks like there are 25 spider webs You know there. what? I, I tell you, I don't endorse things. <laughs> Not that I've ever been approached to endorse anything. But, you know, and I, I do think the whole sale, the, the whole cell phone thing is a scam from top to bottom. It is. But this, this plastic protector thing on the screen, it, it has worked. Well, it has worked. Who'd have thunk it? I think maybe if you would quit throwing it against the wall, no. it would probably decrease the amount of spider webs I'm, in there. I'm not doing that. You know I'm clumsy. <laughs> That's the thing. You know, and we're wasting time talking about this because uh, we're going to have to move today because you said, what, you got 10% left on your phone? I know. And this is what we're recording this on. So I know. It should I guess last we should. a half hour. We should be good. Well, as long-winded as you are, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. let's uh, let's talk let's talk Phantom of the Open because why why did didn't that open this week or was that last week? Am I a week behind because we skipped last week? You're a week ahead. I'm a week ahead. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about Phantom of the Open next week yeah, then, you're, and you're I'm a week excited ahead. apparently to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> you for, you've forgotten something there on your list. It'll occur yes, to me. Yes, Leo Grand. Leo Grand. Yes, I Because you forgot. want to talk about that at some other point? Or? Um, no. There's so many movies this week, gang. We, we don't know which way is up, quite frankly. Well, let's let's start with something that people can stream at home, and that is Spiderhead. Because anytime Chris Hemsworth is in a movie, <laughs> people are going to watch it just because, well, it's Chris Hemsworth. And you know what? He's He seems to have a relationship now with Netflix. Because yes. uh, this is a Netflix film. Yes. I know that he and his brother produced this. Uh, he produced an action film that I liked, but oh, you I hated didn't. Yeah. And there's a sequel coming. I know. Yeah. I know. Uh, those run Netflix. So they, they seem to be you know, in bed with them, as in most, as is as are quite a few people yeah. anymore. Uh, Spiderhead is directed by Joseph Kaczynski, and this is a guy who did Top Gun Maverick. I know, crazy. He did that, and of course, COVID shut that down from opening. So within the interim, he made this, and I know this was made in Australia uh, during the COVID pandemic. And ah, you can see how okay. they could do it because the whole thing takes place in a prison. Right. So you can pretty well contain your cast and everything there. And this is based on a short story that appeared in The New Yorker. Um, interesting concept. Miles Teller is in it, as is uh, Journey Smollett. They are prisoners in this prison, and I'm going to use air quotes around that prison, because right. it's not your typical thing, and really it's a laboratory, right. if we're going to get down to it. Uh, these prisoners have uh, volunteered to be there. Uh, they have privileges that are not available in other jails. Uh, they can kind of wander around as they please. It's more of a communal living type it thing. It looks very comfortable. It's quite posh. The trade-off is, though, that uh, you have to submit to certain experiments that Dr. Hemsworth Submits, uh, <laughs> subjects you to. And what they've done is they have attached a little drug dispensing canister to your back. And there are four different drugs that, at the touch of an app, they can just inject you with just a small dose, a medium dose, or a massive dose of these drugs. And they want to see what your behavior and how you react to these things are. And of course, it starts out rather innocuous, little bitty things. But then, as most things like this happen, they, it goes way, way way out of hand and um you get you get a lot of guilt that's thrown out in order to make these people do these things even though they don't want to and um let's just say things spin wildly out of control um loved hemsworth here he's yeah. having a good time no he, he, he acted too he yeah. acted too pam he did <laughs> he did <laughs> but but you know he's he, it, it was an interesting take on the whole thor persona because thor is kind of boyish and goofy. And this guy uses that boyish charm, but it's completely malevolent. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he, it drips with malice, the yes. way he manipulates these people to do what they want. That simper that he has oh, is yeah. just, he's so cunning and manipulative, and mm -hmm. he he uses his good looks and his oh. personality, his charisma, and he actually admits to that in the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, and how that gets him things and places, and oh, it, it. And as the movie goes on, that smirk kind of changes a little yes, bit, and it yes. becomes. A bit I mean, more, that's, it's tight. It, it is. Tight. It is. He's a little more stressed about how things are going, and you know there are things. The psychology behind this is really quite in interesting, and especially the drug usage in mm -hmm. order to manipulate people's depression, anxiety, aggression, mm -hmm. all the different aspects that we as humans deal with. Yeah, and, and, and I love the, the whole thinking behind this is these drugs will help you act 
normal right. or act as you should will help others uh, not fall into the trap that you did when you did this. Right. And of course, that's whole a uh, complete canard as well. Right. Uh, you know, Miles Teller is becoming one of my favorite actors. He's really gotten better as he's gotten older. I like, really liked him here. Okay, okay. I still liked him best in Whiplash. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, you he's know? good, he's good, but, but he's calmed down here. I mean, you see him growing into, he's, he's learning what it is to be still and, and how that, that can be effective. Right. Uh, you know, he's always been good. Spectacular now. I don't know if you've ever yes, seen that. I mean, yes, he's I like great that in well, that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of lost his way a few other things, but, you know, I, I really liked him here. Uh, uh, and and I like, there are some funny things here, too. I love the guy who, you know, they give one guy a drug to eat <laughs> and eat and eat and eat. <laughs> Until and he vomits. He, and he throws up. And then he eats some more, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, you know, two people who can't stand each other, suddenly they're, you know, having sex. Yeah. Uh, so, so that was kind of fun. Uh, the movie falls apart at the end. I think it falls apart in a few other places as well. Um, I, I do like all of the psychological concepts behind mm-hmm. this movie. Um the thought of free will and Mm -hmm. what is truly free will and do we all have it and at what point um, where are we pushed and pulled in a direction as to our morals and our values supersede these drugs that are given to them. I think that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, the end to me was, I guess the last third, the last act of the movie is more about self-forgiveness and and being able to move forward and not look backwards and punish ourselves. You got that? Okay. Yeah, not punish ourselves for something. We all make bad decisions. Sure. Oh, yeah. Some of those bad decisions result in, you know, okay, I, you know, missed a turn and now I'm 10 minutes late. Because I didn't listen to somebody's direction. And in this case, you know, somebody made a bad decision and got behind the wheel and was drunk driving and killed somebody. Oh, right. And, and, and the whole movie stacks the deck as far as that's concerned. You know, these criminals, I'm using air quotes again that you can't see, they're not bad people. No. You know, we're no. not talking, you know, mass murderers or, you know, this, well, that, I don't know that other. one big guy. I don't know guy. what the hell he did. <laughs> but, <laughs> he was scary, those tattoos on his face. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of a cheat, though, because, you know, they want us to sympathize with these right. people. But you had to apply to be in this program, and I'm sure they didn't take, take the, the worst. Take the hardcore. Yeah. Well, then why are we doing this? I don't know. You know, I mean, if we want to see how the drug works, let's right. get Manson in there and see what we can do with see this guy. See what happens. You know? I'm glad you got something out of the third act, because I really didn't. I thought it was just, oh. okay, another action resolution, a chase and a fight and it a was. fight and a thing. And a, you know. It was, but I did see the whole self-forgiveness right. aspect and moving forward with life. I, I liked that. Um, there are a couple things that I did not like about it. When, um, and I don't think this is too much of a spoiler, but if it is, you know, fast forward about 30 seconds. Um, when uh, Miles Teller and um, Chris Hemsworth fight, mm-hmm. there's no, there's, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, that, that struck me as well. I'm like, I'm like, even if you catch him back on his heels. No, he's going to pummel you. <laughs> he's still even if he's yeah, off balance, you, yeah, you're still going to have a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in talking about Chris Hemsworth and his acting skills, he does act in this. We believe yeah. that he is giving himself these doses of these different drugs. Right. We, be- we believe that's happening to him. The final scene where he's all over the board, we believe he is actually experiencing these things. You and, know? I, and I liked that about that character, that even he wasn't immune to that right. he, he fell into the trap as well right, right which i thought was cool you know we, we forget I, I wish he would just do a flat-out comedy you know we've oh, seen him in, we've seen him in the, the ghostbusters film he had that great supporting yeah, role there and he was hilarious yeah. he's hilarious and, and 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 we get inklings of that in the last couple thor films yeah. so he just needs to do a comedy and just get it out of the system i'm sure it'd be great i think he would be absolutely wonderful and he was phenomenal you know talk about his acting skills rush is one still one of my ah. favorite movies of all time yeah and you know what i want to talk about that if you don't know what she's talking about rush ron howard uh chris hemsworth formula one uh, racing film, check it out. It is great. I, whenever I mention it to someone, they say, what are you talking Nobody about? Nobody knows about that it one. Came it, sh- it should have been an Oscar winner. <laughs> yes, it, I agree. I don't understand what happened to that one. I really, yeah. really don't. Yeah, Rush. Um, all right, so we're t- check it out. Let us know what you think. It's yeah. playing on Netflix, Netflix. this weekend, mm-hmm. beginning this weekend. Uh, what else do you want to talk about? You want to talk about Lightyear? We have to. I okay. mean, it's the big one, so you know, we have one. to. Yeah. Um, okay, so I have to tell you, Lightyear is a spin-off of the Toy Story concept mm-hmm. franchise of how many do we have right now? Four? I think there are four, and then there were a couple of TV specials. I was informed that there is a Lightyear TV show oh on Disney+. Plus. Oh, 
Well, there so, you go. So, you know, light, you know, Toy Story, it's like the poop on your shoe. It's all over the place. <laughs> uh, oh, that is so true. Isn't it right yeah. now, especially this time of year? Yeah. yeah. But let's not get off on that. <laughs> let's not go off on that tangent. Um, we have the story of Buzz Lightyear. This is the original, his origin story, if you will. Right. How did Andy want this, this toy of Buzz Lightyear? Well, this is the movie that Andy watched that made Buzz Lightyear the toy so popular. Mm -hmm. So we get to watch what Andy watched when he was three years old. And let me tell you, this is the movie for the three-year-old and the four-year-old <laughs> and the five-year-old. And beyond that, I don't know. I think we're going to be pushing it there because I was expecting so much more because this is this is Pixar. This is That's Peter, the problem. This is Peter Doctor, who was one of the producers on this, and he's the one who gave us the Toy Story franchise. I was expecting that multi-layered, smart writing, great animation, and we didn't get it in mm, this. Mm. You disagree with me? Animation spot on. Okay. I, I thought the animation was beautiful. Now, I saw it in IMAX. Okay. I didn't realize I was seeing it in IMAX until I, the guy told me it was $15. And then you realized, <laughs> like, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> uh, so I was really able to sit back, and I thought the animation was great. But go ahead. Okay. I, okay. So my issue with the animation isn't the actual drawing itself. It's the editing of. Mm -hmm. um, this is a frenetic, chaotic film that is repetitious. Um, the mm. chaos and the editing in it is so... Mm -hmm. No, it's so... It, they cut everything so worse. fast. I've seen worse. I've seen so Oh, much I've seen worse. worse, too. But this is geared... I think this is like saying, okay, little ones, we know that you... Mommy puts you on your iPad all the time, so now we have to make sure that our scenes are only 3.5 seconds long, and then we're going to cut to something else, because that's your attention mm. span is 3.5 mm. seconds. Mm. Okay. That's, that was my take on it. Okay. I had a headache by the time I was done with mm -hmm. this movie. Um, you should have seen it in IMAX. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have liked just I would have had to leave. Um that's my take on light year. It it, it gives us a nice message, gives kids a nice message. It really hammers at home. It just doesn't have those complex layers that appeal to the older kids that it, that appeals to well, the parents and pulls on their on their heartstrings. There there's there are touches of it. Okay. I mean the whole thing with the time travel thing. Yeah. And the friend that he has who grows old. Right. And he doesn't. I right. mean that's reminiscent of up. Right. You know, as far as that well, I mean, Well, interestingly, the, the director for this also is, was right, up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and, and that's part of, the, part of the problem with yeah. Pixar. They have raised the bar so high that you're right. You are expecting Up. You're expecting Wall-E. You're right. expecting Monster. You, you're expecting that. And you can't reach that bar all the time. And this is second to your Pixar. There's no question. Yeah. There's no question. And also, the, the term I used last week, and I think I'm going to uh, trademark it, uh, peril fatigue. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Yes. I mean, and the only thing that made it bearable here is that the film's only an hour and forty minutes. Oh, is that all? Yeah. Had it been longer, <gasps> I would oh have been God. okay enough. But but it's I don't know how many sequences I watched where it's like, you don't need to do that. It's exciting enough. You don't need to have them do that. You're bogging down the story. Right. And I'm wondering. I want to. I want, somebody needs to do a study on this. You talked about editing rhythm and how long shots were. Right. I want to see how the construction of screenplays has changed in the last five years because you used to have you know normal things that happen in the first act, the second act, and third act. Right. And now it's become to me there are no acts. Right. It's just all one blur of action. And not so much narrative movement. Right. This one, not so much. Again, back to Jurassic World. That is all of that is. Right. Um, you know, there are moments here. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. I mean, it, it's okay. Uh, but I don't think that's what you want to hear when you make a movie like this. That or when you okay. have, yeah, if you have something associated with Toy Story. I don't want that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I think parents bring your three to five-year-olds, maybe your seven to ten-year-olds, and... If you're looking to be entertained too, I don't think you're going to be. Chuck disagrees with me. Ah, uh, just slightly. Just slightly. Just slightly. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna. You know, I'm not gonna go to the mad on this one with okay. you. Okay. Okay. Sounds you know. good. Oh, and if your kids have a phobia about bugs, you may want to talk to them. Those big flying locusty things. Did wow, I you fell asleep. I did. <laughs> oh my God, Pam Stern. <laughs> oh my goodness, were there flying locusty things? They were huge. They were terrifying. In Jurassic World. No. Oh. Lightyear. Okay, I missed it. I missed it. I fell asleep. I did fall asleep in this. Well, why don't we move on to one you didn't <laughs> fall asleep on? <laughs> Which one would that be? <laughs> um, let's, let's look at something kind of fun and cheeky. Brian and Charles. 
Real quickly. Did you see that one yet? I didn't get a chance. Oh, there were just, then there were just gonna, so many. Okay, let's to. let's hold off on that one until next week when you see it, because I really want to discuss okay. this one with right, you. Good enough. Then let's look at Father of the Bride. That's the other biggie. This is another remake of Father of the Bride. Have you seen all of all four of them? There was one in nineteen fifty. Let me see. I, well, there I, was I there was notes. there was the Spencer Tracy and then a yep. sequel to that. Yep. There was the Steve Martin the sequel to that. Yes. And then now there's this one. Or did I miss the, You missed one. There's one in nineteen fifty six and then nineteen ninety one with Steve Martin and Diane Keaton. I think that's the one that most everyone is is more familiar with. Hmm. Okay. All all based on the novel by Buffalo, New York native Edward Streeter, which I didn't realize that either. Okay. You're looking at me like you're questioning me. No, I'm, I'm curious now because you've mentioned a movie that I don't know. So I'm going to look it up while All you right. yammer away. I'm going to yammer mm-hmm. on and on. You know, sometimes you just really shouldn't have a remake. <laughs> and this time, I think it's a good idea. To have a remake or not? Yes. Oh, okay. I was, I was surprised at how they brought this whole concept of daddy doesn't want his little girl to be taken away from him. Um, into the 21st century, into 2022. Mm -hmm. Um, Andy Garcia plays Billy. He's that protective father. Mm -hmm. He is an immigrant who worked really, really hard to make it in America, and he really makes it big. And he's married to Gloria Stefan as Ingrid, and she's the more kind and understanding mother. But together, the two of them have really grown apart and can't see themselves staying married anymore. And so they're working on their marriage that they've decided to end while the daughter comes home from law school, NYU, top of her class. Daddy has so many aspirations for his his winner of a daughter because he's got a loser of a daughter, which is really sad. Wah-wah. Isabella Merced plays Cora. Um, she, well, you know, they doomed her from the start. <laughs> Cora. Cora. There you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, so as as the story goes on, um, this daughter, uh, Sophia, played by Adria Ara... Uh, uh, Come on, do it. You can do Arjona. it. Arjona. Arjona. Oh, good. All Thank right. you. Um, she uh, springs around that she's met this guy. She's going to marry him. They're going to get married in two weeks and start their lives together. All hell breaks loose because the two families don't get along. And we're battling generational differences. We've got the young independent woman who has a mind of her own, who's who's marrying this man who is her equal in every way and partners together for one path. It's really kind of a cool relationship mm-hmm, that they have. Mm-hmm. The parents are totally opposite, both this young man's parents and um, Sophia's parents. They don't get along at all. They have totally different concepts of what should be happening in their lives. And then we've got culture and tradition. Young Aiden, the, the fiance, is is from Mexico and they want to continue their own traditions and they want to have it be a thousand person wedding and money is no issue. And then we've got Andy Garcia's um, side of the family, Billy's side of the family who wants to maintain his traditions. And it's a lot of cultural conflicts and generational conflicts that I really enjoyed. I was going to say that seems to be the new wrinkle here. Yeah. This, these whole cultural things. It, it, it is. Yeah. And it's, and it's I think, really spot on with how how people are viewing marriage and relationships and trying to maintain their cultural identity and traditions and still be, I guess, progressive in, in today's world. Kind of sounds like a little bit like uh, In the Heights. Yes. That whole thing yes, as far as yes, the yes. melding. Yes. You, know, you, you know, you don't want to simula- simulate too much. You want to hang on to certain things. But right. you, that push and pull yeah. of that whole thing. And it's a tough balance. It yeah. really is. That's an excellent um, uh, comparison. That's perfect, actually. So I enjoyed this. It was beautifully filmed. Yes, it's predictable. You know what's going to happen. They put in, you know, there's a big hurricane that's going to hit. And then there are issues to go along with that. And, you know, that's all well and good. But, I mean, it's it was an entertaining movie. And Andy Garcia is incredible in anything he does. I really enjoy watching him. I think he elevates the character in this and brings a sense of genuine reality to it. There was a Father of the Bride TV series as well. Oh, Lord. 61 and 62 lasted two seasons. I missed that one. Yeah, yeah. Also, back to Rush, the Ron Howard film with uh, Chris Hemsworth. It is on Netflix. So oh, is it Netflix, really? If you have Netflix, you can watch it for free. So check it out. Uh, do we have time for one more? Yes. What about Cha Cha? Oh, real let's, let's, yeah, that's the one I forgot to put on my yeah, list. Yeah, Cha Cha, oh, real and, and, smooth. Yeah, let's talk about that uh, and a real quickie on, no pun intended, uh, thanks to you or good luck to you, Leo Grand. Uh, well, we'll see. Okay, well, I want to hold on to that one. Oh, you do? Okay. Because, I mean, right. I, I know you've got a lot to say about that film and we're running out of time. Okay. So let's, let's hang on to that one until okay. you come back. Cha Cha, real smooth. Apple TV is trying to rep- uh, reproduce. Uh, 
the success they had with Coda, a film they picked up in Sundance, uh, was a real crowd pleaser, went on to win the best Oscar, picture Oscar, can't talk today. <laughs> They're trying to do the same thing with this film, Cha Cha Real Smooth, which they also picked up on at Sundance. Uh, and they're going to, I think, take the same tact as far as say, saying this is a heartwarming uh, human uh, drama that everyone can love. You know, drama, comedy, all that stuff. I think do that's what they're going to do. Do you think that's what, what they think? I think that's what they think. Ooh. Uh, Cooper Rafe, a uh, guy, he's, he's pulling in Orson Welles here. He's starring, he's directing, he's producing, he's writing. Uh, he stars as this guy, a young man who's just graduated college and he doesn't know what to do with his life. Uh, his mom, played by Leslie Mann, always wonderful, mm -hmm. and stepfather Brad Garrett moves back in with them. And um, well, mom comes up with an idea. He always likes to have a party, or he's the life of the party. So he becomes like this bar mitzvah party wrangler. I mean, <laughs> wrangler is a good word. His yeah. job is to go to the bar mitzvahs and get everybody riled up and make sure everyone has a good time. And apparently, he charged for this. And apparently, there are so many bar mitzvahs over the course of one summer that you can make a living at this. Well, at one of the bar mitzvahs, he meets a single mom. And it's not some dumpy single mom, not an overweight single mom, not a mom who looks bedraggled and, you know, just hanging at loose ends. It's a single mom played by Dakota Johnson. Well, wouldn't you know that? And she happens to have Dakota. She's okay. <laughs> do you know she's got a uh, she's got a Jane Austen film coming? Out? Yes, I do. I can't wait I for that. Yeah, I love Jane Austen. It's going to be interesting. But back to this. Yeah. Uh, she has an autistic daughter. How convenient! Who is bullied, and our hero Cooper comes to the rescue and takes this kid under his wing and watches out for him and and mom you know she's got her problems husband yeah. is husband is away in new york or i mean not a boyfriend uh they want to get married not quite sure and oh i'm just a little confused and there might be a little kissy kissy going with cooper and there might not be and what do i do and the guy comes back you know what this reminded me of oh do tell <laughs> When you were a teenager, maybe this is a boy thing, okay. but you know, when I was a teenager, you ha you, you're sitting in science class and they're droning on about the elemental table and you could give two shits about the elemental table and your mind starts to wander and you have these fantasies. You have these fantasies in which the, you hit the home run in the bottom of the ninth, you win the World Series. You have these fantasies about you know the girl that you've always wanted actually comes up to you and says, oh my God, I'm in love with you. All of these fantasies. So, so it wasn't hydrogen, helium, beryllium, boron? You no, said, no. What was that? <laughs> yeah. That's what this is. This is a script written by seemingly a teenage boy, and this is a fantasy. This Co the, the Cooper plays the white knight. He comes in and he rescues the autistic child. He can be sensitive and everything. And he is attracted, and there might be a mutual attraction with the hot single mom. And he gets to play the hero and save the day. And it just rung. It didn't ring true to me at all at any point in this movie. No, in fact, it angered me. To How so? The beginning, and I'm again. I guess I'm. I just Pamela Spoiler Powell here. Um, the beginning. In the beginning, Dakota Johnson's character. I don't even remember her name. Mm -hmm. um, ends up in the bathroom. Oh, and Jesus, that. Okay. Is, can don't, I, no, can, don't. okay. I wouldn't, but if you want to refer to how it made you feel. I, I was angry with how her reaction was and what happened almost immediately after. Yes. and That's not going to happen. What the fuck? Well, okay, and there you go. Written from the perspective of an inexperienced young man. Yeah. Again. We're but, not. but why did that get past the anybody else reading this script? I mean, this because, was because, that, that put me be, in the wrong mood. Because right then. he's also the producer and the director. Okay, he's calling the shots. Yeah. That's why. And you know, it's funny. You are the only person I've read some other reviews that have mentioned that. And the other thing that I would think would anger you is that that's, that incident is just a simple plot device. Yeah. It, it's it's crazy. It's, it's it is inconsequential in any other aspect. Right. Yeah. Never referred to again, and yeah, no, absolutely. So after that point, so nobody, you were done. I was done. I mm -hmm. that set me up to be angry with this film. Yeah. So to I can redeem understand that. to redeem itself, I mean, no. I can understand that. Okay. You know, and it's funny that you mentioned that because it, it kind of bothered me, but not to the extent that it bothered you. Uh, but of course, you're coming at it from you know, sure a, a different spot. Uh, no, this is getting rave reviews. 
Oh, that means reviews. I have to write the review uh, then, doesn't it? Well, I don't know. Do you? <laughs> well, I want people to know um, that the emperor has no clothes. This is exactly that. The emperor has no clothes. I'm trying to see what it is uh, trending on Rotten Tomatoes. But it was an eight, at the 80-something percent, percent at some point. Uh, people just, oh, I'm sorry, 91% positive okay. on Rotten Tomatoes. How so, much do I weigh on Rotten Tomatoes? Uh, well, you, <laughs> you, weigh, you weigh one tomato. All right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, on Apple TV. Um, I'd yeah, be really you, curious to see if you want to um, make a comment on our Facebook page, Real Talk with Chuck and Pam. I'd love if you see this movie, if you take the time out to see it, especially women. I want to know what you think, because let me tell you, most of the men that are reviewing this are giving it a positive review. I know our own Critics Association in mm-hmm, Chicago mm-hmm. had it as part of their film, film festival, festival yeah. and I was appalled by that. Um, or my email is real simple, chuckkaplinski at gmail.com. Drop me a comment for both of us yeah. at that. I would love to, on this and, or anything that we talk oh, about. But, but yeah, 91% positive based on 125 reviews at Rotten Tomatoes. All right. Thanks for listening. Real Talk with chuckandpam.com. And again, it's chuckkaplinski at gmail.com. Have fun.